good. It has been my, my way. It's totally of great. Hey, good, right. good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to this press conference. We have a wonderful lineup today, and we have some very exciting announcements. So I'm going to briefly introduce the panel. We're going to go to each of the panelists to give some brief remarks, and then we're going to open it up for Q&A. So hold those questions till the end. Um, so I'm going to start off with the person on my left, Murat Sanmez, the head of the Center for the Fourth Industrial Revolution Network. Murat's going to give us a quick overview on the center. We're then going to turn to President Duque from Colombia, who has a very exciting announcement. Then we're going to turn to the CEO of Salesforce, Mark Benioff, the CEO of ABB, Ulrich Spieshofer, and then we're going to hear from the president of Imperial College, Professor Alice Gast. And then finally, Dr. Kai-Fu Lee, the co-chair of our new Global Artificial Intelligence Council. Murat, over to you. Thank you, Amanda. Good morning. It is indeed a very exciting day today. Uh, we're announcing 100, more than 100 forward-looking international organizations, businesses, and governments have joined the Center for the Fourth Industrial Revolution Network to co-design and pilot new policies for emerging markets. It is truly global, it is truly multi-stakeholder, it is doing-oriented, and it's co-design for the benefit to society. Among those more than 100 organizations are five G7 countries, Canada, France, Japan, United States, United Kingdom. The center network is not just for developed economies because the fourth industrial revolution represents a huge opportunity for emerging markets as well. Colombia, Israel, and the United Arab Emirates are launching the network's first affiliate centers to accelerate and scale pilot projects in their respective countries and also contribute to the global technology governance process. These centers will be run locally, but part of the forum network to share research and accelerate projects. UNICEF, OH, OHCHR, and World Food Program are the first international organizations to join. In terms of new government partners are Azerbaijan, Canada, Kazakhstan, New Zealand, Singapore, Turkey, Vietnam, and Saudi Arabia. And new business partners include Amazon Web Services, Deloitte, Guardian Life, JD.com, Canorio Foundation, Netflix, and Visa. Now I'd like to hand it over to you, Mr. President. Well, thank you so much, Murat. For me, it's a great honor to be here in Davos in the World Economic Forum. And uh, now that you mentioned how important this meeting is, I also want to express that Colombia feels very proud to host one of the four centers that are going to be open in 2019 for the Fourth Industrial Revolution. This center that we're going to host in Colombia is going to be based in Medellin has been recognized as one of the most innovative cities in Latin America. And we're gonna focus on, on three technologies in this first stage. We're gonna work on artificial intelligence, we're gonna work in Internet of Things, and also in blockchain. We believe that this is a great opportunity for us to build public-private partnerships. And uh, I want to express my gratitude to the Mayor of Medellin, who's here with us, Mayor Federico Gutierrez, and also the president from the IDB, Luis Alberto Moreno, who's also here, because we see this opportunity for the Colombian government and for local governments and for Latin American governments to think on how do we adopt the right policies and the right regulation to be winners in the fourth industrial revolution. But we also see this an opportunity to adapt in terms of education, regulation, business development, so that we can create a better environment in Latin America for for this type of technologies to develop. And one thing, just to, um, to, to put it in a, in a broader scope, Colombia is a country that has a great uh, projection in terms of entrepreneurship. We just launched a reactivation policy for, for the economy. We want the economy to grow above 4.5% in the next 18 months. And one of our bets is to improve and increase investment in startups in this type of technologies that are centered on the fourth industrial revolution. We launched a zero income tax policy for startups in the, the creative industries and in technologies such as the ones that I have mentioned. And I see Colombia as a, as a hub for these technologies to develop in Latin America. So we invite investors, corporations to join us so that we can keep on making Colombia 
an innovative country. Thank you so much, Murat. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Mark, over to you. Thank you. Well, thank you so much, uh, Murad, and thank you much, so much, Mr. President, for being here and your tremendous uh, commitment not only to your country but to the Fourth Industrial Revolution. Um, it's an honor to be with you today. As everyone who's uh, going through the World Economic Forum realizes, this is truly an extraordinary moment in history. On one hand, this incredible Fourth Industrial Revolution holds great promise new innovations, new industries, new jobs, new ways to cure disease and end suffering. On the other hand, there's a risk that this fourth industrial revolution will worsen our economic, our racial, our gender, and even our environmental inequalities. This can be seen with artificial intelligence. We are risking a new tech divide between those who have access to AI and those who do not. I so strongly believe that artificial intelligence is truly going to be a new human right. Every person in every country needs to have access to this critical new technology. Of course, today, only a few countries and only a few companies have the very best artificial intelligence in the world. And those who have the artifi artificial intelligence will be smarter, they'll be healthier, they'll be richer, and of course, you've seen their warfare will be significantly more advanced. That is why it's critical that we look now at what we're doing with this amazing technology and asking the questions that are so important, especially in regards to equality. What are we doing to really bring these technologies to everyone? Those without AI are going to be, as I said, weaker and poorer, less educated and sicker. So we must ask ourselves, is this the kind of world we want to live in? This can be seen right in where I live in San Francisco, where we truly have a crisis of inequality. We also have a tremendous tri crisis of trust. You can see that with the misuse of data, the misuse of privacy. All of these things are huge and new complex issues. That's why we have the Center for the Fourth Industrial Revolution. We must have an incredible place to be able to have a true multi-stakeholder dialogue. And Marat and his team have done a phenomenal job over the last two years of building this incredible center, currently in San Francisco, with 70 amazing executives and researchers and thinkers. And now our ability to bring that to Columbia is so powerful because some of these existential questions must be answered. This is a new technology, the Fourth Industrial Revolution, an incredible new technology. Certainly AI is technology like no, none of us have ever seen, and none of us can truly say where it's going. But we do know this. Technology is never good or bad. It's what we do with the technology that matters. And in regards to this technology, we can see our planet is in crisis. Look at the environmental crisis that we have in regards to the oceans. By 2050, the World Economic Forum says we'll have an ocean with more plastic than fish. Nobody wants a plastic ocean. Deforestation is still happening at one acre a second across our planet. Nobody wants a planet without forests. And we can see other incredible environmental catastrophes coming, potentially a three degree increase in warm, global warming. All of these issues could potentially be addressed through this incredible fourth industrial revolution technology. Again, it emphasizes why it's so important, especially right now. We're at a conference where we're committed to improving the state of the world. We're at a conference built on the concept of a multi-stakeholder dialogue. That is the very essence of this Fourth Industrial Revolution Center and why I'm so excited, Mr. President, that it is coming to your country to truly be the leaders in Latin America to help us come into the future together. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And as we all know, uh, Mark is the <coughs> chair of our C4IR Advisory Council. So thank you so much for those words. Now I'd like to pass over to the CEO of ABB, uh, Mr. Speichhofer, over to you. Thank you very much, Amanda. First of all, Mr. President, let me warmly congratulate you to this move. Uh, we have been involved in all the other centers of the fourth industrial revolution, and we can see what it can do to a country 
in terms of mobilizing and driving growth and prosperity. We have been active in the US, but we are also active in India. And if you look at the learnings from these places, we can bring them right to Colombia and help you to get a jump start going. And the jump start could be in the areas of how we shape government regulation in the context of technology, how we get collaboration between uh, education institutions uh, and the government and the center of the force industrial revolution really going. In India, we have a close collaboration with Niti Aayog, which allows us to really drive change very, very quickly. And I'm sure that education and institutions and government institutions in Colombia that will also help. Very quickly, we got to the establishment of a national data infrastructure and a national data marketplace, which I think is something very important for our country to be established and to get that going. So all together, the collaboration pattern that we have learned in other places has helped to boost these countries and it can be something that can also boost Colombia. Now, when I take what it all means, what are the four ingredients that I see that we need to work on jointly? First, technology. You mentioned three very exciting technologies, but they are not independent. There is no AI separate from blockchain and blockchain separate from IoT. Bringing your country, global players like us that are locally active together to have these opportunities to drive value out of convergent use and solutions out of technologies is quite a unique opportunity. The second piece is we need to make sure that the basic hygiene is in order. And the basic hygiene is data integrity, data security, government regulations that help us. But I think also, and that's a learning, a strong learning, AI use is not only, should only not only be governed by government regulations and laws. We need to establish certain values, and we need to have a value-based approach to the adaptation of technology, and we're looking forward to share best practices there. So this gives us the basics, but how do we really differentiate, and how do we mobilize a country like Colombia and others in the world? First, we need to jointly work on information. In San Francisco, in India, we bring a lot of people into the center of force industrial revolution. We share really what's going on there, and we inform the public to reduce the anxiety. Second, we need to use the opportunity to educate. And in education, it's very clear, given the pace of technology development, we cannot stick with the old education systems. We need lifelong patterns of education and training. That means my recommendation out of the experience is Colombia should look at also revolutionizing its education system to be first to really make sure that you take the people also in the 40s and the 50s with you when we go into new technology sectors. And the third one is really let's work on mobilization together. Let's make sure everybody in Colombia gets the opportunity to understand the value that we can create it, we create a positive mindset, and the country really gets going. Because if we get the mobilization going, value will be created. And when value is created, we will have prosperity, growth, and jobs. And I think this is something very strongly all together. So for me, the logic of the Center for Industrial Revolution is very clear. And as following on Mark's comment on the key concerns of the world, whether it's the global warming, whether it is the pollution, whether it's employment, whether it's the uh, challenges that we have to environment. If we use these technologies right, we can do what we as in our company call very simply, we can run the world and we can run Colombia without consuming the earth. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, very much. Thank you Mr. Schieshofer. And also, he's also, ABB is a member of our global advisory board. So thank you very much. We're happy to have you in the network. I'd like now to introduce Professor Alice Gast. She is the co-chair of our Center Advisory Board and also the president of Imperial College London. Professor Gast, over to you. Thank you very much. And I think it's uh, incredibly exciting to be here. Uh, and, and thank you, Mr. President, for uh, joining us today. Uh, we really do need global multi-stakeholder uh, collaboration to make a difference. And that is what the Center for the Fourth Industrial Revolution brings. And I think it's incumbent on all of us to work together uh, to pursue the use of technology for the benefit of society. 
Uh, as was mentioned, regulation and policy are, are challenging uh, with the technology that's changing rapidly. And I think that we have an opportunity to uh, d redouble our efforts to ensure that our research, our education, and our innovation community are staying uh, ahead and building on the positive side of the fourth industrial revolution and making sure that technologies benefit society. On the research side, there are so many exciting things. You can see them all through the ideas labs at, uh, at, in Davos here. And you can see that these uh, research innovations are bringing uh, very positive gains for society. Artificial intelligence is fundamentally changing fundamental basic <coughs> research. It's enhancing our ability to design molecules through chemistry. It's making it possible for us to understand our microbiome and the genome of all of the microbes we live with. It's making it possible for us to have technologies for, uh, for people to use uh, in medicine and health, in surgeries, and it's very, more, very much uh, making it possible for us to tackle the challenges Mark mentions about climate change and global warming. We need to make sure we're pursuing the fundamental research and the research that benefits uh, society. At the same time, we need to educate uh, our students as well as the uh, entire population. As was mentioned, uh, we have an opportunity to bring lifelong learning to people uh, through technology. Uh, we should be educating children about technologies. We should be providing education to people older than us on this panel about technology and we can use technology to help us with that endeavor. That combination of uh, the internet and our ability to teach at a distance, as well as opening our doors to communities in maker spaces, in opportunities to come in and have uh, master's courses to learn about artificial intelligence and machine learning, these opportunities are going to make a difference as we bring the cultural values and norms to society so that we can move forward with positive technology that makes a difference and that will benefit us all. So I agree wholeheartedly that the Center for the Fourth Industrial Revolution is providing a tremendous opportunity for us to define societal and cultural values and norms and to commit ourselves to pursuing those uh, through our educational efforts and through our research and through our innovations. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Gast. So rounding out our very diverse and, and very accomplished panel, we have the co-chair of our Global Council on Artificial Intelligence, Dr. Kai-Fu Lee. Over to you. Uh, thank you, um, uh, Mr. President, Murat. Uh, I'm very, very honored to uh, be the co-chair of the Global AI Council, which is an integral part of the Center for the Fourth Industrial Revolution. Uh, AI is the most amazing technology. It will change every industry imaginable. It will disrupt some and enhance others. Uh, various consulting firms have estimated that AI will create on the order of 13 to 17 trillion dollars of incremental GDP in the next 11 years. And every, a lot of countries are now uh, producing their AI plans, uh, and this is really a great thing. And despite all these benefits, AI also faces many major challenges, those that have to do with ethics and privacy, security, job displacement, and as Mark eloquently talked about, inequality. Uh, and what we hope to do in the Global AI Council is to really be a center that considers many different viewpoints. Because we have to recognize that the attitudes and vision for AI may be different depending on regions and countries, and we have to find a way to work together. A simple catch-all approach simply will not work. The unique advantage of the World Economic Forum is that it was born out of inclusiveness as its fundamental value, and we're not here to impose Western or Eastern values and principles onto the whole world. We're here to bring different learnings and values together that benefits the global AI so that the total benefit is much larger than the sum of individual country AI projects or manifestos. How we go about engaging with each other on this topic 
today will decide the future of human relationship with AI. I am optimistic about the potential of AI technology. I'm certain of its capacity to enhance humanity by liberating us from routine jobs and inspiring us to embrace our creativity and compassion. As the co-chair of the AI Council, I am extremely excited for this opportunity to draw upon the Council's multinational, multidisciplinary expertise and to spark the conversation that we hope will paint a symbiotic future for AI and humanity. Thank you. Thank you very much. So before we open up to Q&A, Marant just wants to add one more thing to his um, talking points. Thank you, Amanda. I'd like to take this opportunity to recognize the contribution of Luis Alberto Moreno, president of Inter-American Development Bank. It was, uh, he and his organization partnered with the center when we launched it, and he has been instrumental in everything we're doing in Latin America, and he was a catalyst uh, for today as well. And he's on the board of trustees of the World Economic Forum and on the advisory board of the center's uh, global network. So thank you very much again, Louis. Over to you, Amanda. So much. Okay, I'm sure there are some questions in the audience. So we have one right up front here and then two in the back. Thank you for giving me this chance. I'm with iPhone.com from Beijing, China. Uh, my question is for President. So China is Colombia's second import partner after the United States, accounting for 19% of all imports coming to the country. Do you expect more Chinese investment coming to Colombia this year? And uh, what kind of preferential policy would your government offer to Chinese business, especially some technology business? Thank you very much. Well, thank you so much for that question. And obviously, we want to uh, keep on inviting Chinese investors to come to Colombia in different sectors. We just mentioned some of the sectors that we're involved in in technology. We really want Colombia to become one of the hubs in terms of artificial intelligence, Internet of Things, uh, robotics in Latin America. But we also see great opportunities in renewable energies. We have here the Minister of, uh, of Energy of Colombia with us. And we're going to make a very important revolution. When you look at Colombia and just in energy, in the energy sector, we have something close to 16,600 megawatts of installed capacity. Renewables are less than 60 megawatts. Mm. This year, we're going to duplicate the, the uh, installed capacity in renewables. And by the end of our administration, we hope to have something close to 15% of the installed capacity in this type of, of energy. So this is a great opportunity. But I must also mention that we want to develop very important infrastructure projects in Colombia in different areas, airports. We're talking about uh, highways, and we're also talking about ports. So we expect investors to come in these areas. But obviously, we also want Colombian exports to keep on growing to different markets. So we also see China as a destination for Colombian exports. And we are trying to identify which products do we want to, to make uh, more accessible to those markets. So in fact, yes, we want to keep on strengthening our ties, not only with China, but with many other countries in the world. And we see China as a very important economy in, in the Asian market. Great, thank you for the question. I think we had some other questions over here. So there's uh, the gentleman in the back, Mike. Thank you, Mike Butcher from TechCrunch in San Francisco. Um, to anyone on the panel, particularly perhaps to Mr. kai Fu Lee, what in particular, or, or Mr. Benioff, what particular initiative has prompted this initiative? What, in, has, has there been some particular thing that's happened recently to prompt this initiative? Uh, because we've known about the, the potential weaponization of AI for some time now. Thank you. And then maybe just while you're there, can we also pass the mic to get the question from the gentleman in the gray suit? Thank you. Um, uh, Mr. President, uh, Cao Xie from Phoenix TV, Hong Kong. Can I just ask a, another question about China and uh, Colombia? Because we know that uh, uh, Colombia is a very important partner for China and uh, South America is a very important market for China. Um, but um, I just want to know uh, uh, if your government will continue to show welcome to China's stuff, uh, investment in the future, because in the Western market, we see lots of the worries and the doubts about China's uh, investment. Mm -hmm. 
not only for finance but also for technology, uh, because of potential risk, potential uh, huge date. What do you think of that? If I may okay. respond in a in a Please. in a bluntly way, Colombia is open for business. Mm -hmm. Colombia is a country that wants to attract investors a, on a daily basis. Colombia's economy is uh, getting more strength, and we we're going to have uh, a growth this year that's going to be hopefully above 3.5 percent. That is going to be pretty much higher than many other economies in the region. But we also see uh, two important things happening. Colombia has taking the right regulations, has, a, has approached the right regulation to have long-term investment in these areas. We just launched the reactivation, the economic reactivation policy, and it has, as I mentioned, zero income tax for the first seven years in investments that are undertaking in technology and creative industries, generating a minimum amount of jobs. Agro-industry has zero income tax for the first 10 years for new startups that generate a minimum amount of jobs. And we just launched a regulation for investments that are above $300 million. So yes, we want to, to bring investors and we want to ensure to all the investors who have come to Colombia a legal security, but at the same time, approach them in a way to invite them to be triggers of formal job generation in Colombia. Thank you, Mr. President. And then to answer the question on AI, uh, Murat, let's start with you, and then we'll go down to Kaifu. Um, basically, the whole network was launched based on the rapid developments in particularly AI and our inability to get ahead of it uh, because the regulatory frameworks that are in place today are designed for 20th century, not for 21st century technology. So that's what prompted the forum to launch the network as a global technology governance platform where we have civil society, academia, business, governments working together hand in hand on a global level doing policy pilots. If you don't do it, as Mark uh, mentioned, AI will benefit just a few, not the rest of the society. Our mission is to ensure that all of these technologies benefit everyone, not just a few. If you don't do it, the bad people, people with bad intent will take advantage of these technologies. And so our Goal is to accelerate positive impact, minimize negative impact. And we welcome you to see us at the Presidio in San Francisco. Yeah, and just to add on to Marat's comments, if you haven't had a chance yet to visit us in San Francisco, and for those of you who are familiar with the movie Star Trek uh, Federation, uh, we're in the Presidio right there, actually. We're looking for the future of the world. We're in the Presidio. Uh, we have about 70 full-time employees there who are some of the top researchers in the fourth industrial revolution. They are a do tank. They are not a think tank. They are a sandbox. They are creating, helping to create and amplify these technologies. The rapid success of the center over the last two years has really begetted the creation now of centers in other places. We realize that we need to bring it to places like Columbia. And of course, we also have other amazing places as well uh, that we're building centers, including Tokyo, Japan, and in China, and in India. And this kind of network of centers is really kind of just to help people to wake up and realize what is going on. I mean, the, 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 the world really is going through a dramatic change. And we need a center like this where uh, we can go to kind of look at what, what, what is really happening. A, a good example is um, uh, we, the CEO of ABB and myself, uh, we recently came together and ran a program at the center for our mutual customers to help explain to them how these technologies are going to benefit them, how we can collaborate with them, how we can help design their future. And we've now brought thousands of people from all over the world to our center in San Francisco. Well, it's not enough. We have to do more and we have to bring this message around the world. And that's why Colombia is one of the very first countries that we are going to, and I think this is a critical time. Look, we all realize we're in a crisis of trust right now in the tech industry. The tech lash has never been bigger, you know, and I'm sure you'd agree with that. And also, you, you live in San Francisco, you know we have a crisis of inequality. There's no question about that. Just walk down our streets. Well, we're the tip of the spear. We're a great place to study technology and its, and its, and its implications in San Francisco because we are a little bit like Star Trek, you know, pointed out. We are a little bit in the future. You know, we do have the whales jumping. We have to protect the whales, the dolphins. We have to take care of our ocean, our planet. This is the time to do it. And one of the ways to do it is with this fourth industrial revolution. 
So, Thank you. Okay. Please, Kai Fu. Yes, from the Global AI Council perspective, um, uh, I think AI technology is just moving too quickly, and there are many people who misunderstand it. Uh, there's also some paranoia and hype, and there's also tension between countries that are really, uh, in my opinion, unnecessary. I think a transparent discussion of what AI's benefits and challenges are, bringing in multidisciplinary expertise. Uh, it's very dangerous, I see, that um, there are various views of viewpoints expressed uh, by experts in one field that don't cover other fields. There are people who view it purely from a governance standpoint, policy standpoint, purely based on an ethics standpoint, or purely based on a monetary standpoint or a technology standpoint. I think we need to look at all of this in aggregate. And uh, the set of experts that we have assembled, I think covers all these expertise areas and also covers all the continents. Because I think it's important that while US and China are ahead, it is important to spread uh, what we know to all the countries, um, uh, whether developed or emerging. Well, thank you very much. I think that is all the time our speakers have. I know all of the questions about AI are, are always thought-provoking, and we're, we're hoping to close the gap between policy and technology at the center in the center network. So, Mr. President, Can oh. Can I add just one, oh, of course, one, one, please. One, one, one small thing? Because I think that, that question that was asked is very important in the context of Latin America. Exactly. Colombia recently became a member of, uh, of the OECD. And what I see for Colombia in the future if we're, uh, is for us to pass from being a country with an income per capita of around $7,000 mm -hmm. to reach a per capita of more mm -hmm. than $30,000. That might last two decades, but we have to start now, and we have to start with, 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 uh, with impetus. Mm -hmm. Now, in order for us to achieve that purpose, we have to embrace the fourth industrial revolution. And this is why this center is not only important for us, but for the rest of Latin America, yes. so that we become winners and we can start closing the digital gap. That's the aggregated value that I see in this initiative, and that's why we're so thankful with the World Economic Forum, and we see this as a great opportunity and as a showcase for us. If we succeed, if we build the right public-private par partnerships, if we also have the projects with the private sector, with the public sector, in terms of regulation, adaptation, and adoption, I think this can be spread in many other developing countries. Thank you, Mr. President. And thank you to all the speakers, and thank you to all of your questions. Um, we look forward to a very exciting year in 2019. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>